So just to build up some context, Ben, back in April of 2015, you and I <laughs> recorded the investment grade versus investment stock, which is part of the vernacular now, I reckon, that's really embedded in the industry that wasn't that well known back then in 2015. So we spent a bit of time differentiating between the two. And so the good news is that, well, I, I cannot remember what we said. I'll be totally honest, Ben. But but what I do know is the principles that we talk about at a framework level are always um, 90, well, let's throw a number, 98.3% uh, evergreen, Ben. They are evergreen principles because we rarely talk about topics that are fad or Johnny on the spot or um, not timeless principles. So the idea of there being investment grade and there being investment stock is still as relevant today as it ever was and will still be relevant going into the future. So yep, supply is the enemy of capital growth. Um, investment grade versus investment stock moves on the principle that investment stock is built on mass, mass volumes of that homogenous stock. So there's no point of difference. There's no relevance to it. And our argument around investment grade is that combination of land, well-located land, because at the end of the day, it's the land that appreciates, but you can also get um, some improvements on that land that have high desirability, high emotional content, and that rings true anywhere. Now, what we are seeing with low interest rates um, is that it means that the rising tide is again lifting all ships. So the argument's going to be is who gets the long-term income growth and that will revert back to even some of those more important areas that I believe will still continue to outperform based on um, the desirability and the demand for those areas as opposed to the investment stocks. It's been proven there's some data that's floating around now around um, what performs better. Old houses perform better than any other compounding return over a long period of analysis. And the most uh, underperforming asset has been medium and high density apartment stock. So it's true to form and we think that will continue. Two things. There's a paradoxical thing, a paradoxical um, concept of investment stock is not good for investors. So let that land. It's paradoxical. You think, hang on a second. You just said it's investment stock is not good for investors. That's right. Because as a, an experienced investor, you want to chase stock that owner occupiers like. We have documented that multiple times on this podcast. So circle back to that if you need to. So that's number one. And number two, where it has a slight difference is in the inner Sydney market because a bit of that medium density stock is actually performed quite well for a lot of people. I've had a lot of Sydney folks go, hang on a second. Well, that city is probably the only city that actually has a little bit of a, um, a higher performance on someone that's because it's got such huge population. Mm. The geography in Sydney is barriered by a national park to the south. They've got a mountain range to the side. They've got um, ocean and then they've got all these waterways. It just makes it so geographically tough. that So therefore, it's such a higher density city. But I still wouldn't be loose in Sydney. I'd still go back to the fundamentals of yeah. making sure that if you are going to buy in a proven performing block, um, not the massive high rises that are under enormous stress, um, both from a PR perspective, from an engineering perspective, from a body corporate perspective. So medium density stock works a bit better in that city, but I still would ignore the fundamentals that we talked about at your peril in that city. So the good news that we can give Al Knight Lewis and for everyone who's listening, who might be in a similar journey where they've just started with us. Yes, the timeless evergreen principles that we talked about uh, back in April 2015 still do exist. So like I said, I can't remember what we said, Ben, but I do feel 100% confident that the actual framework that we talked about um, is well and truly um, relevant today. Mm -hmm.